Hi there, this is Dr. Ross again for Responsible and Ethical Conduct of Research Training in Biology 104. So this week, we're going to talk about our next subject in the series of six topics. This week, we're going to talk about record keeping and maintaining a laboratory notebook. If you are participating with us asynchronously, please remember that we have a Google Doc for you to add your comments to so that we can participate in some asynchronous discussion. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash the letter F, capital F, and then the numeral two, numeral one, lowercase r, e, c, r, and then the numeral four. And do remember that you have to be logged into your Google Apps with your Fresno State Google credentials to access that document and participate with us. So let's use that document first to brainstorm the purpose of the laboratory notebook and what its goal is or what your goal should be as you complete the lab notebook as we go through this laboratory course and as you go through other laboratory courses and experiences. So please pause the video now, go to the Google Doc and record your initial reactions before we get into some of the instruction about record keeping. So pause now, come back when you're done. And welcome back. So let's look at a couple of thoughts. I mean, these are my thoughts since this is an asynchronous discussion. So this won't necessarily reflect everything that you might have brainstormed. So let's start on the left side with the purpose of the notebook. Typical purpose is to record observations. So that is not at all striking. I mean, that's the main purpose of the lab notebook. It's a place for you to record observations. So what else? What other purposes does the lab notebook serve? Purposes and goals. Well, it should also record not only observations, but other details and this will dovetail into what we're about to talk about, which is what should go into the notebook, not just the purpose and the goal. But the purpose is to make a real authentic record of what happened. So let's turn to the goal. So it's observations and other details. The goal of your notebook, what's it for? Why do we do this? Well, the main reason is, and this is a critical concept, the lab notebook is not just for a grade although it may seem like completing a lab notebook in the context of a laboratory course is to earn a grade. But in research, which we're conducting this semester, it's also, and also a record of the observations. A lab notebook is not just for your use. This is probably the most critical concept in the ethical and responsible conduct of research in terms of record keeping, you're keeping this record for you and everybody that comes after you. It's a historical document, basically. So in my research group, for example, and in lab this semester, you're writing the lab notebook to be a real-time observation and record, but students in the future may want to look back on what you did and your results to build on what you're doing right now. So it, that's really important to keep in mind as you think about how to maintain a laboratory notebook, that you're not writing it for you. You're writing it for your current use. And also you have to think ahead about everybody else that's gonna follow. So as an example, and this is based on my life, I just wanna point out that I got this email, which is tiny, so I'll read it. It says, thanks, Joe, it was fun to put the paper together and dig through the Peichel Lab archives. Peichel Lab. This is from Katie Peichel, who was my PhD supervisor when I earned my doctoral degree. Uh, she says, it's fun to dig through the archives, including all of the Y back fish images, so photographs that I took of research data. And thanks for your clear labeling and organization. So this I'm using to exemplify why it's important to think about maintaining your records for the use of others. So I was a graduate student between 2002 and 2008. So I worked with Katie from in that period of time. And it was in 2020, maybe 2019, 
that she contacted me because she wanted to use some of the data that I collected basically 15 years prior as part of a new research manuscript. So I got to be an author on this paper because I was able to contribute data from over a decade ago. And the only way that I was able to get this accolade, this is a benefit to my career being a, an author on a manuscript, because when I originally collected those data, I did a really excellent job of, as Katie put it, my clear labeling and organization of the data so that others could come in more than 15 years later and still understood what had happened and find the data and interpret the data and use it for other purposes that we hadn't even dreamt of when I was doing those experiments. Right. So summary, it's important to think about how you maintain your notebook and your lab records for the use of others in the future. That's the main use of the laboratory notebook. So once again, we'll take a pause and let you turn back to the Google Doc for some brainstorming. This is the most purposeful, practical, fundamental part of today's discussion. We're going to answer the question, how? How should you maintain records in a lab notebook? So what are some contents? We'll have two, con two places on the Google Doc to enter. One about what content? What should you record in the lab notebook? And then also some best practices. And you may not have a lot of ideas about best practices for record keeping now, but I think you probably know at least one or two. So please brainstorm those as well on our shared Google Doc. Pause the video now and come back when you're done. All right, welcome back. And now let's go through a few points that I would come up with as I was brainstorming these concepts of, and I'm going to start on the right side because I think that's easier. What goes into the lab notebook? So things like the date, there should be a title for every page. Title should be descriptive, but brief. So explain what it is you're working on that day. What's the purpose? So then we get into the objective. What are you in the laboratory on that day to do? What's your purpose? So the objective or purpose. And again, this is useful for context, not only for you later, if you need to come back and try to remember what it was you were doing, but also very useful for people that might come back to your lab notebook years from now and not have to try to figure out what it is you were doing and what your flow of logic was between one experiment and the next. And they'll more easily be able to tell what it is you were doing and why. So then we've got a laundry list of other things that you would probably consider typical for a laboratory notebook. Um, experimental design, the materials that you were using. And by the way, experimental design and many of these components that should be in the lab notebook should include drawings, probably sketches, diagrams, photographs of laboratory equipment showing what settings they were at when you use them or written descriptions of the same. For materials, we're talking about things like chemicals, biological strains, organisms, and then also equipment. What type of equipment are you using? If you're using a microscope, which is very pertinent to our class, what model was it? So what was the brand? What was the model? What magnification were the objectives at? What was the lighting like in the laboratory? And so forth. You should, I think most obviously, have your results. So a record of the raw data that you collect in the lab notebook. And then here we get into some things that people don't often think about in terms of what should go in the lab notebook. Your interpretation of the results. So the results should lead to interpretations. What do the results mean? I should have added maybe up here to the top objective, purpose, and hypothesis or goal. So that when you get your results, then towards the end of your daily entry for the lab notebook, did the results, what was, what's your interpretation of the results? Did they agree with your hypothesis or not? Did you meet the goal for what you meant to go into the lab to do or not? And so part of that then should be answering the question, especially why not? So if your interpretations don't match your hypothesis or your goal, what happened? Why did things not work the way you expected? What might have happened if an experiment didn't work well? And then most 
importantly, not just for you, but especially for people coming back. What are you going to do next? This is especially important if you have a, a week off during the middle of the semester, for example. So you come in one week, the next week, maybe it's a vacation week or holiday week. So the whole week, none of the lab sections meet. You come back the week after. So now it's two weeks gone. Do you remember what it was the last thing you were doing when you were in lab two weeks ago? So it's always useful and a best practice. So this is shared with both sides of the table to record how you felt that day, what your, not necessarily what your emotions were that day, but what was your concluding feeling about how did it, did it go well? Did it not go well? What should you do the next time you come into the lab to address any problems that you may have encountered? How are you going to change your experiment in its next iteration, the next round of experiments, to try to hone or to improve those experiments to make them work better if your experiment didn't work the way you intended the first time. So now let's turn to best practices and record a few things there, somewhat based on the notebook content. So definitely record in pen, no pencil. One of the main principles for lab record keeping is it needs to be permanent and not able to be altered. That's particularly important for the ethics component of record keeping that you might be tempted to go back and change something or erase something if it's in pencil, but if it's written in pen, then that removes some of that tendency to think, well, maybe I should go back and try to you know, remove those data that didn't make sense in the first place. So that leads to another one. So use a single line to scratch through or make a single line through any mistakes you record in pen in your lab notebook. Don't totally obliterate them, scribble them out entirely so that you can't see what was written there. Again, that prevents against other people perhaps thinking that maybe you were trying to cover something up. So if you make a mistake, a single line through it so you can read what the mistake was, but understand that you saw that that was a mistake and that you redid the work. Um, one of the most important concepts here is that the lab notebook is not meant to be perfect, uh, flawless, right? So this goes along with that previous comment about if there's a mistake, don't erase it, don't start over, just scratch through it and keep going on the same lab notebook page. This is meant to be a real time record of what you're doing. So you should be making notes in it. You should be recording in real time primary data. You should not, in other words, make notes on scrap pieces of paper, or lab paper towels, or even a bound second notebook and think that well, okay, later tonight, I'm going to go home and I'm going to organize it really nicely and then transcribe everything from my notes into the perfect, you know, nice version of the formal lab notebook. That is not what this is meant to be. The lab notebook is meant to be real time. That serves two purposes, well, three really. One, it prevents you from thinking later, well, maybe I should, you know, round that number differently. It prevents you from making mistakes in memory. That's the most important thing is not going home later and saying, well, oh, let's see, what was the model number of that machine I was using? Or what was the lot number of the chemical, right? What was the expiration date? What year was it manufactured? Those details all need to be recorded in real time to ensure that they're the most accurate details possible. So that's probably the most important best practice is keeping the lab notebook maintained in real time, not waiting till the end of the lab period to update, do, working on it consistently throughout the entire process. Now, one thing to think about with record keeping is a lot of our materials and data are collected digitally now, digital photographs. You might be using a spectrophotometer that provides a printout instead of you having to write down numbers by hand. There are a lot of things to think about in terms of maintaining the data in a format that anybody can read, remembering that this is for the future. This record keeping, this notebook is not just for you, it is for you, but think about who is going to be able to access your data in the future. And is it going to be, for example, if it's a digital image, where are you going to store it so that anybody in the future can find it? Right? Don't store it on your Fresno State Google Drive because I don't know, maybe one day that goes away. Maybe your ability to access it goes away and then those data are lost. 
So keeping printouts of even digital data is important. So if you've got a digital image, don't keep it on your phone in the cloud. We need it to be, have a file name that's a unique file name. You write the file name in your lab notebook and you say where somebody can find that file. So it might be that you need to put it on um, a different cloud service that's accessible by more people than just you. So there's a lot to think about in terms of data accessibility. And if you do printouts, do please tape them into your lab notebook. Do not just slip a printout in between the pages of your lab notebook because it will fall out and then no one will know where to put it. Right? So tape things in, even printouts of digital data. And one last thing, although there's, there's a lot more we could talk about, but I do want to be mindful of your time. Again, for the benefit of others, please, please, please put a table of contents in the front of your notebook. Normally, I would tape a piece of paper to the inside the cover that is, for example, the date and the title of the experiment and the page number. So that's something I didn't mention yet, but that would be sort of a table of contents. Have a column for the date, so each page number has a date and you record the title. And that way, if somebody is looking for a particular series of experiments you ran, they'll more quickly be able to find it than starting from the front of your notebook and working all of the way through. So the last thing for this is page numbers. Best practice is to have a automatically numbered, is printed page numbered lab notebook. So if you buy a lab notebook, you have an option to buy one where the lab where the numbers are already printed on all of the pages for you. That's ideal again from the ethics standpoint because that prevents you or anybody else from removing data from your notebook by tearing out pages. Because it will be obvious if there's a missing page because the lab, the page numbering won't go one two three four five. It might go one two five. And then somebody would obviously recognize that the page that contains three and four on the back and front is missing. The next best thing is to make sure that you have numbered all the pages yourself. It's a serial number from the first page to the back page, number every side. So front page one, back side two, facing page three, the next page four, and so on. So those are all practices that will help make sure that you're recording your lab notebook materials in an ethical way. We already talked about considerations for digital records. And uh, one that I want to point out in particular is what about for digital images? Let's talk about file formats just for a second. Lots of cameras, digital cameras that you'll work with in laboratory equipment will allow you to save images in different file formats. So you might have the option of a .tiff file or a .jpeg file or maybe a GIF or a portable network graphic, a PNG file. Which of those, I'm not going to ask you to record this in the Google Doc, but which of those do you think is the best format for maintaining digital records for images? I'll give that some thought. And the point here is to consider long-term storage of digital materials. The same concept here goes for text files too. Would you save something as a Word document or an HTML file, a web page, essentially, or a Google Doc? It depends on how long you think any of those companies is going to support computers opening and reading those types of file formats, which is why printing out hard copy is always the best, because you're sure that that will never get destroyed. Which brings me to another best practice for lab notebooks, incidentally, which is maintaining a copy off-site. You are required to keep your lab notebook in the laboratory. But what happens if there's a fire on campus and the laboratory gets destroyed? Then all of the lab notebooks get destroyed too. So it's great if you take a picture of every page in your lab notebook and have those housed somewhere else that's not in the science building at Fresno State. So think about backups of your data as well. So let's get back to this conversation. I've had a few minutes to think about file formats. It turns out that JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs are not the best formats for digital records. Now, the benefit of JPEGs, GIFs, and J PNGs is that 
currently anyway, web browsers can open these, most telephones can open these in terms of the camera and the photos apps on different platforms, different phone manufacturers. But TIFFs have the highest resolution, can anyway, have the highest resolution, which means you're not losing data because the camera is compressing the size of the file to make it a smaller file. It's also a lossless encoding system. So TIFF, JPEG, GIF, and PNG are all different algorithms that computers use to store image data in a digital file. And JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs throw out some data to try to make the image more simple so that it takes less space to store. So in this case, TIFF would be the ideal image format to store any, for example, this semester, agarose gel images in or micrographs of nematodes under the microscope. So ultimately, I plead with you, both in this class and in other classes and in other situations in your life where you need to maintain records, take time every day to do this. Don't let this task slip and say, I'm going to work on it later because so much important information gets lost from your memory, even if you wait a day to work on this. So please consider that part of your job as a student this semester in Biology 104, in your two hours and 15 minutes every week, that one block of time, consider that some of that time has to be spent working on your lab notebook. That's part of what this class experience is about. And that's going to prevent you from getting caught making any ethical errors in terms of record keeping. So as usual, this week, we've got a discussion board assignment on lab notebooks and what we just discussed. So please work on that. And that's going to be due a week from now when we'll meet again to talk about the next research ethics topic. Thanks again for your time. I'll see you then.